Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope y'all are doing great. I'm doing okay. Today we are going to be doing some decoupaging. I hope I got everything <laughs> we needed. I hope y'all are having a great Friday. I know for some of us, it's just barely starting. Nine o'clock is still relatively early. So what we're going to do is, you know, I put in the comment in the description box what you're going to need. You need some glue, some Mod Podge, water, paintbrush, napkins, and something to decoupage. I thought it would be really cool to start using up some of the things that I had purchased for a... Um, a series that I thought I wanted to do, but I changed my mind. So I've got these little shelves out, and I think these will be really pretty somewhere in my house, maybe. So what we're going to do, we're going to paint them. And I didn't sand them down. Normally, I would sand it down. I just, I want to come on and craft. Good morning, Heather. I hope you're doing well today. And just come on and hang out with you all because I, I wasn't really sure <laughs> on what we would be doing today. I mean, I have a few plans, but I'm not sure about all of the things that we're going to do. So I thought I'd come on and just start prepping, prepping the stuff that we're going to be doing. And I like this napkin from Tuesday morning. I got it a while back. This is how it looks. And you know that I like stamps and tickets and all of this just said, hey, excuse me. So what we're going to do, is I took out two of my acrylic paints. I took out this snow white, and then I took out antique white. And I think we're going to use the antique white. I'm more partial to the yellow white when you're crafting. Thank you. I like those a lot. I, You know, I was supposed to do a video a long time ago. Because I had asked if anyone wanted to swap napkins, and no one responded. And then people was like, oh, I didn't know that you had asked that. And I was like, well, I could, I'm just shaking this paint up. I got this from, um, let's see where I got this from. Probably one of the big craft stores or Walmart. I'm not sure. I don't know if they sell Delta. I know they sell the Apple Barrel for 50 cents or it went up a little bit. So I'm not quite sure. But, um. Maybe I got it from Joanne Fabric. You know, Joanne will put their paint on sale from time to time. And so now what we're going to do is just go ahead and we're going to use this paintbrush. I do have some water right here. And I'm just going to run my paintbrush in and get the dust and slivers off. I would probably say if you want it to be like a really, really nice, nice project, Go ahead and sand it off. I did do one thing. I took the price, the uh, little label off of it, you know, the Dollar Tree label. I did get these last year. I had stocked up on a few craft supplies before, you know, they changed their prices. I think, yeah, I'm going to use this. So I'm just, I don't, I'm not a painter. So I just usually um, pour a little bit of paint. And we're going to use this. And it looks almost the exact same as the wood. And we're going to just pick a direction to stroke our painting. Is this really needed since we're going to cover this up? Uh, it's your decision. I will leave that up to you. I would say if you want it to be a certain way, yeah. If you don't want it to be a certain way, then no. It's not needed at all. It's not needed at all. But since the color of the paint is almost the exact same color of the, the box, you won't be able to tell that you you can't see it on camera. Good morning, Samara. I hope you're doing well. It is Friday. <laughs> but I thought it would be neat. Because we're only going to do the sides, both sides. Well, the whole, the, all the side panels, but we won't be doing the inside because I don't feel like uh, stressing myself out like that. So I wanted to start it a little bit early, but then I was look, researching something and I uh, ran out of time. And I think we only need one coat because this is a pretty decent paint. Maybe it's just getting bad because it feels really thick. 
And I do want to apologize for the closeness of the camera. I am going to look for another arm for the camera that I have. I love the arm. It's great for what I needed to do. But I can't raise the camera up really well like I want to. And if you don't like getting your hands messy, because you know I really don't care to get my hands messy, uh, be mindful of that. I mean, you are painting, so you got to decide on if you want to paint and get sticky fingers or if you want to paint and be super neat. There are some people out there that can accomplish both. I am not one of those people. So I'll be just washing my hands at the end of the stream. I do want to say that we will be doing this project and hopefully we can have enough time to do some bead work. So if you're off today and not getting ready to go to work or at work, pull out your crafty supplies and, uh, you know, let's craft together. So the weather here, i not sure if you're aware of what's going on with the weather. It is... It's, it's weird. It's cold. Um, not gonna even just. I don't. So I don't watch the news, as most of you know. But I, you know, I just hope that the conflict that seems to be kicking up ends quicker versus extended. I think sometimes we should be able to discuss things and come to a happy medium. But sometimes we can't do that. Oh, 79 in Florida. You know, just rub it in. It is, what is it today here? Cold. <laughs> what was the temperature? I think it was 39, 40. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. You know, I oh, it is the, the first. I still have to do my other project, my Halloween project. Look at that from 40 in Alaska. But is that normal for you? you like that 40 because 40 in alaska seems hot for some reason to me but i don't know i could be wrong so i'm just going down this a little bit more now you can see this little bubbling uh if i had would have sanded it down i don't think it would bubble like that okay i have a very good friend who um his wife is from Alaska, I believe, and I think that's where they're living currently. I think. I feel like Alaska marches to the beat of its own drum, just like Florida, because you know Florida has some interesting situations. Um, Texas too. I'm not excluding my crazy state, but I've watched a few of those, and I know it's for TV. I've watched a few of those shows. Um, with Florida, uh, not Florida, with uh, Alaska. And I'm like, uh, I don't know if I would do that. <laughs> so I do have some, is this parchment paper? I have wax paper down so that we don't have to worry about sticking to the mat. I actually, see, I, I, I semi-prepare for almost everything, I think. So we'll see, I have some water to rinse off my brush. I have napkins to dry the brush off. I have the Mod Podge, the napkins, everything I think we'll need for this project. Now, when it comes to our jewelry making project, chicken with a head cut off is what I will be. So we're just gonna lay this right here and move on to the next one. I did three, because I think you know, because everyone always gets on me about my numbers. When I decorate, I do like three. I like to have like a little tri a line cascade, like one, two, three, to go down in a diagonal, or two on the side and one in the middle. But I learned that from my mom. She used to be very good at um, decorating things. Well, at least to me, you know. When you're a kid, you don't really know, unless you don't like it. Then you're like, I don't like that. But this brush, I don't know where it's from. I want to say it's one from the like the five dollar pack. It's not as heavy as the one that you could get from Michaels, 
uh, artist loft. You know, they have a, a set. But I do like it. I like the brushes that look like that for some reason. And so I'm just scoop, scooping this out. Not really RTC, artist, artisty, but it's going to work for what we need. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be a coat of antique white. I really like this color a lot. I could have just used some wood stain, right? But we're going to go to extra step today. And while we paint the other two, we'll give that one enough time to dry. And we'll be going on to the next step of the napkin application. So if you're not going to work, if you want to hang out, and make some something grab your napkins if you're a craft i'm sure you have some decorative nap a paper craft i should say i'm sure you have some decorative napkins go ahead and pull them out and um play along with me if not go ahead and grab your beads <laughs> and uh let's get started with that so i'm gonna tell y'all this story i got a jewelry summon last week, like on a Wednesday or Thursday, I believe. So when I got the jury summons, I was like, man, I don't want to have jury duty. So I'm reading the paper and we can do this jury duty summons was online. So it was for the 23rd, which I think was Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. So I get my son up early earlier than normal, get him dressed, you know, and out the door, and I'm home. And I'm like, well, before that, I did, you can do the online survey to see if you qualify to be a juror or not. So I'm answering all the questions. And when I answer the, one of the questions, it says, are you a convicted felon? I can't wait till you can craft with me, ma'am. Um, and I clicked yes, but I'm not a convicted felon. I clicked the wrong, I clicked the wrong answer right so i'm freaking out because i don't want to go to jail for lying to the jury people about jury duty right i'm freaking out I'm freaking out because i got a preliminary disqualification um message so i'm freaking out i'm trying to call them now the summons i think it was supposed to be for eight o'clock on the zoom so i go and i call the number that they have i'm calling the number no one's answering of course right so when I call, finish calling the number, um, at 7.30 on the dot I call, because I'm trying to figure out how to fix my error. So I call, right? And um, the guy answers the phone, one of the clerks or whatever. He says, oh, don't worry about it. You still have to come to jury duty because people click the wrong button all the time. I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> well, that's great. Because, you know, I've heard of people going to jail for lying on jury duty stuff. And I didn't want to be one of those people. Because I always think about if I'm not here, who's going to take care of my son? That's, you know, that's what I always think, like. How's he going to get what he needs to get done? Probably not the best mental thought to have, but that's what I always think. All right. I need to pop this down. And we're just going to paint this back. Is that I remember? Yeah, we didn't paint this back. Now my hands are starting to get a little goofy. Yeah, I, um, I guess... I've only been summoned a few times, and each time I couldn't attend. So I've never been like on real jury duty. But in school, um, back in the day, you know, you went on a lot of, inter in my opinion, a lot more interesting field trips than you really think about when you're um, at school. So we got a chance to go to court and watch a real case. And we only got a chance to watch like 30 minutes of the case. And we were like the pretend jury. 
and we got a chance to, you know, come up with a vote. And we were, it was a hung jury, but we were like in middle school. So we were all like, well, I was like, we don't have enough, you know, we didn't have enough information, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, you got to decide on what it is um, with the information that you're given. And I was like, you know, well, okay. So, you know, we all, we all got a hung jury and the teacher was like, it's too bad that you got a hung jury. And I'm like, we didn't even have enough time to, you know, really get get into the meat and potatoes of the case. We only got 30 minutes of it. But it was a funny uh, experience. And from that, I learned that I really don't need to be doing no jury duty. <laughs> Not in real life. Because I'm like, I'm always like, in the weeds, like, why did they do this? Why is this needed? Why do you want to? So I just stuck my fingers on there. My hands are clean, but not, don't stick your hand on there, paint clean, right? Hi, Nix. Hopefully you are doing well. Oh, wow. And that's what the man told me. He said, um, you'll get something again. <laughs> But they canceled this one. <laughs> so all that freaking out I did was for not. Oh, well, you know what? If you work in a legal field, they ain't going to be like, uh, ma'am, no, you know. You know the ins and outs, the intricacies of all of the, all of our shenanigans. So no. So this paint is a bit tacky, and I'm just going to let it do its thing. And by do its thing, I'm just going to let it dry as it is. I'm not going to make it dry any faster. You know, I always have, I always get worried about when I get the heat gun out and try to advance us faster than what we need to be advancing. I chose this brush because it's really flat and I like that. Oh, wow. You got that good. It's like, yeah, she going to show up. She going to give us no problem. The thing is they tell you to show up in like good clothes, show up, you know, like you get ready to go to a job interview, basically. Well, back in the day job interview where people show up and they're like, oh, Okay, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, don't nobody want to be dressing up to come to jury duty? Because I wouldn't have been able to do it anyway because I have to be there at 8 if it was in virtual, uh, real life, 8 o'clock, and I have to drop my son off by a certain time. So I wouldn't have been on time to get from this side of town to the other side of town. I remember mom had jury duty. and She was like, I got selected, even though, you know, she was trying not to get selected. She said, I'm losing money. I said, I thought they pay you for jury duty. She was like, it's like $6. They ain't even enough for lunch or something. I was like, yes. That is a true statement, madam. Very true statement. So this is one, two, and now we're doing three. I don't know anyone that really cares for jury duty unless you have a sucky job and you're like, oh, I'm glad I got jury duty. Yeah. I don't have that kind of luck. I have, oh, you don't want to do it? You got selected. You're doing it. I'm always like the opposite of whatever it is. If I want to win something, I lose. If I want to do that, I, I yeah, I don't get lucky. <laughs> like, like I, don't, I wouldn't mind wasting a whole day not to get selected, but I'd probably waste a whole day. They would come back tomorrow. You on the standby jury thing. Because I think that happened to my mom before. And she was so mad because she was like, this is not going to pay the bills. 
Because I remember I called, I had got a letter. I was like, I'm not even in uh, the state. She was like, this lady was like, it's your civic duty, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, ma'am, listen. Okay. See if you want, see, see if you want. <laughs> see if I show up. All right. So we got our. Oh, I missed a spot. You really can't tell if I missed a spot or not, but it just looked dry. Like they hadn't got anything on there yet. All right, so now we got that. We're going to drop our paint brush in the bucket for a little second or two. And I just created my own little bucket. I have a bottle of water, cut the top off, and created. You know, I learned all these, I learned how to be a good crafter from the five minute crafts. No, I'm joking. I never watched those anymore. I thought I learned that they were um, not telling the truth about their crafts. Because, you know, people have videos, like reaction videos to the five minute crafts. And they're like, it's no way our five minute you know, all the life hacks that they have. They was like, there's no way that you can do this in this amount. And look, the, the angle is different. It's a different foot. The shoe color is different. I'm like, y'all really investigated that. Uh, and I'm like, I appreciate you letting me know that you don't want <laughs> But that's not true. So uh, I'm just going to wipe this off. I normally do not leave this kind of paintbrush in the water because I feel like it's going to break off. And we don't want that. All right. And then at the end, I'll go and get some soapy water, warm soapy water, and just wash it. I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to work, but that's just how I tend to do it. All right. So now I'm just going to sit this to the side. Now I'm by my computer, so I, I'm attempted to be extra careful with the water. All right, so it's dry. Dry, dry, dry. Not even tacky. So hopefully these are dry the same way. And this is the napkin that we're going to be using. And then, let's see. They sent an email to me because I, you know, I lied basically, but not on purpose. It was a, it was an accident. It was not on purpose. And uh, they were like, "You got to give us proof that you were convicted of a felon." And I was like, "I just talked to the guy. And he said I, you know, I was thinking to myself, like I just talked to this guy. And he said I didn't have to do that. So I was hoping that this would have been dry, drier." And I just want to see how we're going to piece this on. So this is one, two, three, right? So I think what we'll do is we will just cut up the side. Yeah. So I'm going to cut the middle out. Now, I'm not too concerned about wasting the napkin too much, but I don't want to waste the napkin, if that makes any sense to you all. I know a lot of people out there will say, don't cut your napkin until you know what you're going, how you're going to cut, how you're going to apply it. And I am pretty confident in what we're going to be doing. Unfortunately, this project probably will not, we will not see the end of this project because we have to let the coats of glue set. But next week, next Tuesday, I will share with you. Now, my son doesn't have school next Friday. So I'm not sure if I'll be on. And I'm just cutting these rough edges off.
and then I went to the 99 cent store yesterday because I went to look for, you know, my boycotting the Dollar Tree is not really working because apparently people are still going there and buying stuff. So it's not working, right? I cut it right on the scene. Um, and I went to the 99 cent store and they have up their prices too. A lot of that stuff is no longer 99 cents. It's now a dollar twenty-nine. So if I was going to be real cheaper, I would still it would still be cheaper to go to the Dollar Tree. But what I did was I just went to the big box grocery store and bought what I was needing. It was some sandwich bags, some you know, some kitchen stuff, bags and wrap and all that other stuff. And I just got it for three dollars. But it was four times the amount that I would have gotten at the dollar store. Any one of them, the 99 cent or dollar twenty-five store. So I was like, okay, well, let's just see. It's probably beneficial for us to me, basically, to just go to the regular stores and um do it like that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to get our clean wrap. And you don't need to have clean wrap, but it just makes it easier for you. Don't cut your finger. And it looks like this. You can use the Dollar Tree kind or the, you know, the cheap, the cheap kind. Now, if you cook, I would definitely recommend getting a craft one and a house one. I stole this out the pantry in the kitchen, so. We'll see how that goes. You don't really need this, but it's, it's e it makes it easier for you to apply your napkins. I'm just going to get a little bit. I'm just going to kind of haul it up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this here. And I'm going to a little bit more. I, really want, I want to keep them all three through three. Oh yeah. See, I um I realize, you know, prices are going up. I get it. Inflation, whatever's going on is going on. I get it. But you know, people are getting paid more. So you're going up on prices, but you're still not increasing people's pay to pay for the things that are going up. And that's the sad part about all of this. You know, because really, did you need all that crap you were buying from the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store? And my answer is, uh, yes, I did. No. The real answer is, no, I didn't need all that junk. Because I got plenty of other junk that I could use. But I need you to tell me why it's so expensive. So I just dab oversaturated in one area. And now we're just going to tear this napkin just like that. And we don't want it to have a clean look. Yeah, I haven't been to the Walmart's dollar section in a while. So now we're just going to peel this off. And I want to make sure that this is not a, another ply on here because sometimes it's three ply. So I'm just going to read the label. Yeah, so this is a triple ply, so I'm going to, uh, you can take your tape, some washi tape or sticky tape, and just put it on one side and, and lift it up. But this napkin is coming apart, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, this is where, you know, my technique may be different from another person that you watch or maybe even your technique. I tend to fluctuate because <laughs> sometimes I just forget. But you want to apply a little bit at a time, right? You don't want to apply a whole bunch of Mod Podge. And apparently, see, I knew this was going to happen. I can't even find the Mod Podge. But I brought it to the table with me. So I need to just locate it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, 
the other side of the room. Wow. I had watched a um like a little TikTok video of someone that was calling Walmart and they was like, Yeah, I'm calling for my uh W-2. And they was like, Okay, well, what's the problem? He's like, Yeah, I don't have my W-2 right now, whatever. And it was like, Well, what section do you work at? He was like, uh, the self-checkout area. <laughs> I was like, that's funny. I thought that was hilarious. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using some matte. Even though it's matte, sometimes it still seems to dry, uh, shiny. So we go. And we're going to we're going to apply a little bit. If you have a bowl or a plate, you can definitely apply it like that. But I'm not doing that today because I didn't I didn't think that through. So I'm just going to apply this right here. Yeah, I, I found that so funny. Like, I don't have TikTok. I don't have a lot of the social media things that people are doing. And I feel like because I'm an older person, some of that stuff doesn't really appeal to my taste and what I like. So, but I thought that was funny. It was another one that um, I had got. I've gotten a few that I'm like, that is funny. That's some genius stuff right there. Whoever thought of that comedic genius. So we're just applying it one layer at a time because it don't want to stick down. That's okay. And then we're just going to apply some on top as well. So we're going to do behind and on top, behind and on top, one layer at a time, or one uh, pillar at a time. And what I plan on doing once we get it all down is I'm going to, and it dries, I'm going to take a sand, like a um, fingernail file, and just sand that edge down. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't do, I don't do self-checkout that much unless I'm, like, in a rush and I need to hurry up. I was in line one time, and a lady was like, ma'am, you know, self-checkout's right there. I said, no, I'm good. She was like, Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're going to check me out at the self-checkout, then yeah, go ahead. But I'll stand in line and wait. Because I'm always like, I don't have nothing to do. I have to be at a certain place by a certain time. We good. We good on time for now. And so you see how right here is a little bit of bubbling up. You can do this now if you want to and just kind of smooth it and um, pat it down. Or you can keep going. Now, I haven't decided, and I think I need to decide that fairly soon. I think we'll probably end up just cutting that little section right there that's in that divot because we I think we want to show that we did some type of work. And so if you have a, a skinny or a thin paintbrush or a skewer, you can definitely um, um, use that. Yeah, I don't do self-checkout that often. But one day I went to Walmart. Walmart is the worst self-checkout there is. Um, and they had no cashiers available. And I was like, okay, well, I have no choice. And then the person opened the line up, and I was like, okay, good, I'm getting over there. I remember this was a couple of months back, probably before Christmas, so a lot of months back. All right, it was uh, September, October. Their system went down, so they had to shut down all the self-checkout lines and open up because, you know, open up the the regular checkout. And the lady was mad. She was like, the computer system is down, blah, 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 blah. You have to have cash. I was like, I got cash. Let's do this. She was like, huh, okay. <laughs> I was like, ma'am, you do not realize what self-checkout will do to us eventually. The problem is, I know people that say, because you give me self checkout, I, I'm getting my. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pay myself out of this, and they, you know, they they won't scan everything. 
that's what I asked. And this lady looked at me like I will slap you. I was like, you don't even get a percent off of checking yourself out or anything. Like, what is the what is the beauty of doing self-checkout? What's the purpose besides I guess someone complained it was like it's not convenient? I don't know. I feel like self-checkout is taking jobs away from people. So that's another reason why I just I don't know. You know, sometimes the price be is wrong and off and who wants to deal with that? Because then you still gotta wait on somebody to come over and, and adjust the price for you. If they're gonna adjust the price, like when I went to 99 cent store, the packaging clearly said 99 cents. And the lady was like, Oh, we went up on the price, the prices went up, and I'm like it says 99 cents on the thing, but I was like, okay. Like, I didn't go, you know, crazy. I was like, that's fine. I'll just, I won't buy it. Because I was getting three, so that would have been 60 cents extra. And, you know, when you think about it, 60 cents isn't a big deal. But then it is. It's more about the principle than anything. So we got our first side done, and I'm just rubbing this down some. Then we're going to take our clean. It's too clingy. I'm going to pat up. What's, what's going on right here? And now I'm just trying to like get it in a crevice because what I want to do, I think I want to do it now so it can dry like that. What do y'all think? Y'all like it like this with no line or you want me to the line in? Let me know. Yeah, when I lived in Mississippi, they would shut down all of the registers. It was self-checkout and um, at the Kroger, the grocery store there. And people would be upset. Like, you got to get in there before 9 o'clock. The thing is, you know, some people... And I, I'm not I'm not above what I'm about to say. Some people are computer or technology challenged sometimes. Like I remember when they first started doing self checkout, and I couldn't get the daggone thing to, to work. You say no line, yeah, and I don't have a line. If you you know like people that get um, government assistance or whatever, you just got paid and you go and you do your monthly, your bi monthly food supply and um no line okay no line we won't put the line in um i just found about the grocery store you don't want to be ringing yourself out with three grocery carts full of food like the other day i was at the store yesterday did i go to the store yesterday yeah this lady had two carts and i was like i would hate to be scanning her all right, so we got our first one. Yay. And now we're going to do our second one. Right here. We're trying to make this line a little bit neater, I guess. I guess it doesn't matter because it looks like it's upside down, even though it's not. That's just how the, the print is. All right, so we got this. I don't want to cut it, but I'll cut it, I guess. Just looks a little bit neater. Cut. Even though it don't matter, because tearing it or cutting it, it's not even matching up. Yeah, so I, I um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So we got our one layer. I'm going to go to slide this so it can dry so we can go right here and see what the heck I'm doing. And then you know it's rinse and repeat. I had told myself, I said, you're gonna have to start back couponing if if things keep going here. And I'm like, eventually, you know, somebody will come up with a, a cheap store to go to eventually again. Because I think that's how um, those inexpensive stores actually popped up, you know, for more affordable. 
But when you think about it, the Dollar Tree really isn't cheaper than the big box stores in some instances. Because some of the stuff that they sell is expired or, or, or getting ready to expire. And so, you know, they have like a use by, a quicker use by date than other products would be. So yesterday I went to the, gro our, the, the local grocery store here is, it's a few, but the big box one is H-E-B. I don't know what the thing stands for. Here, everybody, something is from what I understand. And then Walmart. And then it's a more local, you know, more smaller mom and pop or cater to the whatever ethnicity, ethnicity or culture that is a part of that brand. Like, you know, some Asian stores, some um, Hispanic stores that are, you know, is Spanish or Asian, et cetera, et cetera. But I went to HEB because I went to Walmart last week, one of those days, and the, the, the produce looked like, I don't know what was going on with it. It was just sad looking. HEB is more expensive than Walmart, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. But I um, I would prefer healthy healthy looking fruit versus not healthy looking fruit. So yeah. I um you know health is is a lot more important to me than uh it has been I wanna get back into my I wanna get back into quote unquote fighting weight. I wanna lose some pounds so I've been just trying to eat a lot healthier than normal and I think I'm not sure how you all feel about this statement but I feel like it's hard to plan a meal every single day like every single day I'm planning a meal right I'm creating a meal and yes that makes soup chicken potatoes peas carrots corn in the crock pot and i was like yes it should last us two days so i wouldn't have to cook today it's gone it's just a little bit left and i'm like uh i didn't want to cook today because you know we don't eat beef or pork so it's a little bit harder for me to create a bunch of meals when i'm limiting some of the things that um You know we're not eating eating but i just feel like oh that's a lot you know that's a lot of work so we'll probably not eat real healthy today you know what i really wish that i could do that so my son and his father are extremely picky The big woman is probably worse than the little woman. I have a little thing right here, so I'm just trying to smooth it out. And I, I will say that I have my own food quirks as well, right? But, like, I don't like macaroni and cheese. My son loves it. Um, if I make baked beans, big woman don't like it. If I make this, the little roommate don't like it. Like the other day, I made cabbage. Little roommate didn't eat. And around here, you don't eat the food that's prepared. You don't eat. So I was like, just try, you know, like just try it. You know, you'll like it or whatever. Because I like cabbage. Nope. So I'm gonna just slide this down. I'm like, uh, what are you going to eat? He's like, can I just have some cookies? <laughs> no, you cannot just have no dang cookies. Yeah, cabbage, I love it. I didn't like it a lot um, growing up. Because I don't think 
we had we didn't have cabbage like during the week. Cabbage was on a Sunday meal, right? Cabbage and uh, maybe some steak or uh, pork chops and um, some beans or something else. So we didn't have it. Um, I know what I didn't do. So we didn't eat it. You know, my mom made it more of a Sunday meal. And, you know, uh, in the state, in the, in the South, I should say, a lot of Southern families make meals. Like the Sunday meal is the heavy meal or the larger meal. So it takes a little bit more time to prepare. I wouldn't say it's like a Christmas or a Thanksgiving meal, but it's definitely not your weekday of uh you know, when I was younger, pork chops and french fries or um, corn on a cob and something. It was, you know, more more food. Hopefully that'll last us. But I don't, I don't, I guess I look tradition in the face and laugh. Ha 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 ha. Because I don't make traditional meals like that on Sunday. Sometimes I will. But like I always ask the big roommate, like, what do you want to eat? I don't care, whatever you cook. That is not helpful, sir. It really isn't. Not helpful at all. So, um, you know, it gets it gets harder and harder preparing the meal. And then I'll ask my son, what would you like? Chick-fil-A? <laughs> See, we didn't already messed up. Did we mess up? This is how it goes. All right, our last one, and then we got to do the other side, and then we'll do the sides. Yeah, so it's never a consistent question in the house, like, what do you want to eat? What you going to cook? What do you want to eat? What are you going to eat? What are you going to cook? I don't care what you got to taste for, uh, just some food, really. And then I'll start naming off some, no, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. Like, he has a, the big roommate can't eat red sauce meals that much. But I like spaghetti. So, and like yesterday when I made the soup, you know, well, people make soups differently, but I usually put a can of tomato sauce. Yeah, like, or, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm like, uh, can you please help out in some kind of way? And then I'll be like, I'm not cooking today. Like, I'll declare it early in the morning time so we can figure out what we want to eat. By the end of the day, we're back at, well, what do you want? I don't care. What do you want? I don't care. You you don't want this? No, I don't want that. And we don't have like a, like, I like Chinese food. We don't have a really good Chinese. I'm just trying to pull this open because you're wondering what's going on. Um, we don't have a really good Chinese food place near us. Hi, the last. Hopefully you're doing well. You're having a good Friday. Just put some napkins on some wood. Some decoupage. So I'm not sure what I'm eating today. <laughs> Crafty life is Heather, just in case. I bet you got a lot of people messing with you, Heather. Well, maybe not. Some people like, you know, but I could think of like the Heather's, the movie, um, Heather Locklear from 90210. Was she 90210? Or the other one that came off, spin off? Yes, a napkin that we're uh, attempting to uh, be great with. And Nick's decided that we didn't want wine on it, so. 
slide this. Hopefully the camera doesn't start flashing because of the uh it's perceiving this to be more white than anything. Okay, Melrose Place, yeah. I remember uh when I uh first started watching Melrose Place you know, a long time ago. Long, long, long time ago. And um the girl, the one that was supposed to be getting married, and then she went crazy and started stalking people and killing people. Every time I see her, I'm like, she's evil. I don't care what movie she... She could be Mrs. Claus for all I care in the movie. She could be on every day on Hallmark Channel show, and I'm like, she's evil. She's evil. Oh, no worries. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about how I always thought that girl from 90210... Even though, I mean, she was, I mean, she had a right to be kind of like jaded, I suppose, but I just labeled her as evil. And so whenever I would see her in other shows, I'm like, she's evil. Like, you guys remember MASH? Hopefully you do. And Radar, you know, he was such a nice guy in uh, MASH. Yeah. What's her name? Amber? In the show? I don't know. The one, I think that she was supposed to get engaged or something happened, like she ran off the side of the road, maybe she faked her death or something, I can't remember, and then she um, was out trying to kill people, and one of the shows, she, I think she, what's the guy with the blonde hair, the blonde curly hair, I think they were a couple, and then he started dating someone else, and she tried to get them. No! No! You can't feel like that about him. Because you know, Danny Glover, well, you know what? Yeah, I used to be like Danny Glover. But, you know, with MASH, <laughs> not Mr. Danny Glover, um, not, not Danny Glover, Radar, Radar O'Reilly, he played like a serial killer in one of those daytime, I think he was a serial killer or something, a rapist, one of, the, one of those evil things. And I was like, not Radar, no. I think it was Radar. If it wasn't Radar, it was Klinger. One of those two characters was playing like a bad guy. And I was like, listen, Alan Alda, you bet not betray me. <laughs> I don't think, I, I haven't really looked at Danny Glover as being a, a meanie and thinking that he's not good in the shows. But some characters, I definitely have an animosity against like the uh the guy from uh why did i get married and when she pushed his butt in the tub i was like yes good job <laughs> listen y'all don't judge me okay because we all have those like evil streaks i remember when i first watched the is it the burning no not burning yeah burning bed and i think coal miner's daughter when uh, loretta lynn i think she got back at one of those guys too Maybe it was just the burning bed, but I was like, yes, get it. And then that's when they first started talking about domestic violence. It's like the leading thing. Women are abused or beat by their significant other or spouses, and people don't um, do anything about it. And then they started talking about spousal abuse and all that. I was like, good job. You know what? I... My, in my eyes, my uncle, he, he, even though he doesn't, he reminds me of Lawrence Fishmore because he's lot, real tall and he has like those big bug eyes like Lawrence Fishmore does. So, you know, when he was Ike Turner, I was like, well, shoot. Then I was thinking, Lawrence Fishmore been in every daggone movie. But I have a soft spot for him from corn, Cornbread Early Me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> But it is a few people that I'm like, get them. Because I remember, I, I want to say Peter Falk, Falk, uh, Columbo, I think he played a bad guy in the movie before. And I was like, what are you doing, Columbo? This is not going to end well for me and you. <laughs> I think that's what happened. I think. I can't recall. Because I don't, 
uh, I mean, the shows that we're talking about are older shows, and I don't watch any of the newer shows. So you see how I just kind of tuck this in? I'm going to tuck it in on all four sides, but then I'm going to come back once this dries, and you guys won't see this. But once it dries, I'm going to come back with a, 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 a thin layer of sandpaper and just sand that off so it looks it has a really nice edge. And um, I haven't decided if we're going to do the end the bottom like that because I'm going to put decoupage or well, napkin around the top, all the sides. So it won't just be one side. At least three sides will have napkin on there. Oh, yeah, when he was in, what's that movie? Uh, 24 hour or 48 hour, the film movie. Um, yeah, Robin. I was like, uh, sir, you need to be doing something funny. Like, no, you can't do this, sir. All right, so now we're going to do our sides. And I want to tell you, I think I messed this up. I should have just took one napkin and folded across the whole thing. But that's okay. Lesson learned. We can try that another time. So these are drying now. That is dry. And that is dry. So this one's drying. Yeah. I th you know, it's funny that we said it about the men, but none of the ladies that have been uh, bad girls were said anything about. Like, there's been a few ladies that have had questionable roles and we're like, get him, girl. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Robin Williams was... I remember when he was in, what is it, What Dreams May Come, when his wife uh, had killed herself and he went to go save her and find her. I thought that was really... Uh, this is not the first one. I thought that was really a, you know, a good concept. I... I am a sucker for visual arts when it comes to movies. So I was just like, ooh, this is a good movie. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if we can't match this up. And I don't think we can. But what we're going to do is just cut right here so we can try to preserve this other half to go on the sides yeah i think um i guess we all kind of have a soft spot for some of our favorite actors and actresses when they do like crazy roles yeah i liked it i i used to work at blockbuster um, Y'all know what Blockbuster is. But I used to work at Blockbuster, so I saw I used to watch a lot of movies, and then as I when I graduated from high school, I was still, like, into movies. And I was into, like, story-rich um, movies, more so than, like, oh, who is this actor in it, and stuff like that. Now, some movies I don't watch because of certain actors or actresses in it. I don't think that they're very good at their jobs, and so I just opt out of you know, going to the movie theater or watch them perform because I think that they're not that great. So that has always been like one of the things that, you know, people are like, oh, we're going to go to the movie. I'm like, what are we going to see? No, I'll pass. I remember when um, I didn't want to go see one of the movies and we went to see it and it was not, it wasn't that bad. It was better than I thought it was going to be. But then like I went to see Bowfinger, for example, and that movie was trash right if you've not never seen bowfinger you know you're doing yourself a favor so to speak i thought it was going to be really good because and maybe i just missed the mark because i've talked to people and they're like oh that was a really good movie i'm like did we see the same movie because it was not good to me at least um but eddie murphy steve martin they had a great cast and then it was trash just pulling these plies off of me. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, at one point I was going to the movie theater every Friday or every Saturday I would go to the movie theater. And I always had this idea of what going to the movie theater looked like. 
and the idea was never go by yourself. And then I got to a certain point, you know, as you develop your own thinking, you start to do things different or better than you did before, right? Just don't want to come apart. And so I started going to, I started taking myself out to the movie and then getting a bite to eat or having a bite to eat and then the movie. And I remember when uh, Face Off came out. I think I went to see that with my friends, group of girls or whatever. But I went to see Snake Eyes with Nicolas Cage in it by myself, right? And people were like, this movie sucked. I didn't like the movie, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, did we just watch the same movie? It was a pretty good movie. Like, it I, it wasn't like, it's not on my top 10, like, I need to go watch it again movie. But it was a really, in my opinion, it was a decent movie. And so I think, like, whenever people tell me, oh, so-and-so is a good movie, I'm like, mm -mm, I don't trust you. Or, like, when people tell me, oh, this food is good, I'm like, I don't know if I can trust your taste buds because I have such an acquired visual quirk about certain movies that I have to know more about the movie. Like, I'll watch movies from the middle to the end. If it's a decent movie, then I'll go back and watch it from the beginning sometimes like you know in Kanto, right like everyone's talking about we don't talk about bruno and stuff so i was like what in the world is going on with this so i had to see it i watched it from the middle and then i watched it to the end and i was like uh it really didn't catch my full uh it didn't really peak my all of my attention like disney movies normally do and i probably shouldn't have watched the middle i probably should just watched it from the very beginning but I was watching it in the morning time before I got the little roommate up. So I was like, okay, let me see how much time I have left before I need to do clothes or make his lunch or whatever. And I'll probably give it a, another chance. But I, one of the characters in the movie, I just didn't care for. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's how I do my movies now. Like, the last movie we saw was 2020. We went to the movie theater. Yeah. 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 Cisco and Ebert back in the day. Like, bruh. Are you serious? I, uh, we went to see Onward. And someone was talking about it in one of their live streams. And I was like, it was a cute movie. She's like, it was cute, but it wasn't that good. I was like, it was a good, you know. I wasn't arguing with her, but I was like, it was a good movie. What do you mean it wasn't good? She was like, it didn't have enough depth. I'm like, it's a kid's movie, first of all. My son, he was like standing up and sitting down, squirming, because he was five or four. Five or four when we went to see the movie. And so it's a kid's movie. These People think that these movies are for adults. The cartoons, the animated films, unless it says like rated R or parental advisory it's not really for us we want to take over everything we don't want the kids to have nothing because they want to take over everything anyway but i was like you know what's a kid's movie and she was like yeah but it could have did blah 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 blah. i was like okay i can just say we're gonna have to agree to disagree like i'm sure somebody out there thinks that the lion king was not the greatest movie and they would be wrong it was a really good movie but i'm saying they probably could say they didn't like the Lion King, which is not really good. And like somebody said, like, have you ever seen Balto? I thought it was a cute movie. Um, and it was a true story. I like true story shows. I actually like happy ending shows as well. So uh, I tend not to watch a lot of the crazier things that's on because of that. And I'm like, it's enough heartache and despair in the world. Make a movie that's going to make us laugh and feel good, not walk out the theater scratching our heads about why did they go that route. At least that's my opinion on some movies. Like, I remember I watched, was it Casino? Back in the day, and I'm like, mm -hmm. so what just happened there? And then, like, people talk about Inception. I'm like, what's going on here? And I watched one movie. I think it may have been Inception, where everybody was 
killing each other at the end of the movie? Maybe it was Casino. I don't remember. I was like, I wasted all this time for this. I wasted all of this time for this ending. Ugh, not good. Yeah. That adult ADD kick in from sitting down and watching movies now. I will tell you one of the movies that I thought was a really, a really, really good movie um, was Six Cents. No. What is it? Six Cents? Yeah, Six Cents with the little boy. Uh, Joel o- Joel. I was going to say Joel Olstein, but that wasn't it was that movie. <laughs> you know, the one with uh, uh, Bruce Willis when he's the, the therapist and uh, the little boy that says, I see dead people. I hope that was Six Sense. Is that Six Sense? Well, anyway, I thought that was a good movie. And then, you know, some of my friends were like, I saw, I saw that ending from a mile away. It was trash. I was like, the movie was good. You're not supposed to guess the end of the movie at the very beginning, it was a really good movie. I do tend to like comedies, though, more so than anything else. All right, so we're moving on to our next tier. Yeah, I was like, yeah. And then the other movie with, uh, is it The Bone Collector? I think the same, was it M. Night Shyamalan? I think he directed the movie when the guy was cutting his fingertips, his, um, his uh, fingerprints off so they couldn't catch him. I don't know if that was Bone Collector or not. But that was a really good movie too and people were like, oh, I didn't like it. Oh, I'm always like, if you can do better, go make one. Like, Go do your thing. You think it's better. Go out there and do it. Oh, I like comedies. Definitely. I like stand-up comedy more than I like comedies. Because I'm like, Sometimes in comedies, just for me, I'm like, that was that was too much. You're doing too much. That was way over the top. You have to be that extra. But I do enjoy a good comedy. It doesn't even have to be a girl comedy or, you know, like a chick flick or a romantic comedy. Just something that's going to make me laugh. Like, uh, the last, well, I have, ne- I, you know, I'm about to, I, I don't watch any of the newer comedy, like the kind of like dirty comedy, not dirty in a bad way, but like, you know, like gross, like they're farting and throwing up and pooping. And I haven't seen no, I don't watch those comedies. And my son has, so the last six, almost seven years, I haven't watched any adult. Oh, wow. You know what? So with Man on Fire, right? I was like, Cover y'all ears if you don't want to hear the spoiler, right? I was like, I didn't want him to die. I was like, whatever, you know, I was like, they need to make a part two and show that he didn't die or whatever. My friend was like, what are you smoking? He dead. I was like, no, he can't be dead. I like breathing. <laughs> don't judge me, y'all. I, I, know. I know. I like that movie a lot. Yeah. I have not seen... A lot of movies with him, the newer movies, like the Book of Eli and all those. I haven't seen them. He has a new one coming out, I think. I I don't know. I'm not really into movies anymore right now. And plus, I like kid movies. Yeah, I was like, no, why did they do that? The Equalizer, but I heard, isn't it a part two for the Equalizer? Maybe I'm thinking of another movie. Yeah, so I um, as as I'm getting as I get older, I can't sit. I don't want to sit in the movie theater to watch, or stay in the movies because I'm like this is boring or this is dry. Like, I went to see Django Unchained um, when it first came out. And, you know, I didn't know it was a Quentin Tarantino movie. I had one with a co-worker. Christmas Day, the movie was semi-packed. And I'm like, how long is this movie? And she was like, I don't know. It just came out today. I was like, oh, we had a premiere. Like, we had a first date movie. I was like, oh, great. So I asked the, the, 
attendant. And he was like, oh, it's pretty long. The next one starts at like, it was a late time. I was like, oh, Lord. So I had to go use the restroom. But, you know, it was like three hours. And I watched it, and I was like, I could have watched Scooby-Doo for this. Like, it wasn't a bad movie. It was just not one of mine. I'm not a huge Quentin Tarantino fan, so he wasn't like, ooh, I gotta go see it because Tarantino got a new movie. Oh, no. But it had a great cast. Some of the stuff was uh, questionable, in my opinion. Because, you know, I was I was more on the thing of, like, these are slaves and they have this vocabulary. How? Some of the words that they were saying, I, and I was like, was that word even around... Uh, back in those days like that was my thing like i don't know um i don't think immaculate was around in 1800 for example right i, I don't think that was around in in that time frame or even jargon for example was around in 1800 but they were using those words and i was like this is not accurate in my head i was like this is not accurate i can't so yeah i was like mm -hmm. But I watch cartoons now. I, my one of my old time favorite cartoons is Scooby Doo. So my little guy don't like Scooby Doo. So my he has really long hair. So when I wash his hair on the weekends, we compromise. We watch Scooby Doo. We watch uh, Bubble Guppies, Peppa Pig, and it's another little kids cartoon that they do number counting with. We watch that mess. And then DC superhero girls. I'm like, oh, okay. And I, you know, he's at that that stage where he doesn't understand if someone's real or not. Like the villains and stuff like, you know, they're not real. He's like, they are real, mommy. I'm like, they're not real. They are real. I'm like, son, they're not real. Cause he's he's like, how old is Batman? I'm like, Batman is old. Spider Man is old. Excuse me, but you know they keep recreating the characters so they don't look at old. So we're gonna sit this to the side. Because you can see this white line is still like closing in. So and I try not to, you know, burst burst his bubble too much when it comes to that. But I'm like, they're not real. Because he likes uh the Joker and Harley Quinn and another person. And I'm like, I don't even know who these villains are. These are some new villains. Mommy can't help you. He's like, do you think is it Top Shot, Hot Shot? It's one of them. It's like an electrical guy. What do you think about him, Mommy? I'm like, well, let's worry about you picking up your socks. Let's focus on that. Let's not worry about these villains. Because they're not important right now. In the grand scheme of things, they're not important. <laughs> He's like, you know, he wants to get his point across. I'm like, okay, fine. Go ahead, Stan. Excuse me, one second. I am back. The big roommate was asking me a question. And I feel like this is a little short, which is not good. But we're going to work through it. Hopefully we can lay this down. Lid. Pretty decent. Yeah. So um, I don't watch any of the TV shows now. But one TV show the big roommate really was into is 911. And I was like, hmm, okay, let's watch this. And I am one of those people that I'll tell you, like, I like MASH. Um, I like the drama, the medical dramas. I like the. Uh, Um, cop shows and stuff like that, but 911 was just over the top, in my opinion. It was so much like going on. I was like, Is this even can I follow the storyline? And then I just gave up because I was like, I don't want to watch it. I didn't, I don't want to, I don't want to be glued to the TV for a premiere and stuff. And then you know, characters stop showing up. Like, one of the ladies on the show left the show. 
at the very beginning and they was like she it was a, it was stressful or something i'm like well dang it i put too much in my body don't do like me don't put too much If you had like a little outside stand or something, you could put this on your outside for your plants. If you have like seeds and things like that, because I think that'd be really cute to go outside. Or if you want to turn it into some fancy birdhouse. I, I wanted to decoupage a birdhouse today, um, but the birdhouse is really, really small. And I was like, uh, that's going to be a short video. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, let's do this because I have a few of these things. I have a few of these panels because I want to do a few other things with them. So I was like, yeah, we can, we can start this thing off. And then if we have enough time, we can transition into the, the beading. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough time, though. And then I was like, do, do y'all want to watch me make jewelry uh, live or would you prefer those? like as videos you can leave a comment now if you like and that way i'll know you know normally i make chunky charms and i'm not sure if i want to watch me do that i was going to make a stretching bracelet a few stretching pieces because i had this genius idea i was like yeah we can do some stretching bracelets and then i can do some earrings for the collab that's coming up and that could be my collab but I did, um, I don't remember the, the color that was supposed to have. So I'm just going to put some more over there. Yeah, I even told a big roommate about uh, the e not the equalizer, Man on Fire. And I was like, he shouldn't have killed, you know, spoiler. I was like, he's not dead. They're going to do a part two. He looked at me like, <laughs> what you smoke it is not gonna be a part two and i was thinking how did the daddy set the whole thing up like that's why i don't watch those thought-provoking movies right there i've never seen which i want to watch but i haven't seen is taken because I, I love that scene i'm gonna find you like that's one of my favorite lines but then they have a take it part two, so I don't know. Why right, is a take it part two? Now I'll tell you what movie I did see that was ridiculous. Is it Crank? I think it's Crank. With the guy that the, from Transporter, they uh put those drugs in his system and he had to do keep adrenaline and stuff. He's jumping out the out windows and stuff. I was just like, this is I put too much right here, y'all. Just saying no. Yeah, I uh I was like, what? I haven't seen Taken uh, ever. I've only seen uh, previews of it. And I was like, I, I could watch that. Because it looks like it would keep my attention, hopefully. But now you know you can pause stuff and you can um, come back to it, fast forward to see if you don't really want to see, et cetera, et cetera. And with all these streaming services and Redbox and all that. Although I'm quite sure Taken is not in red box right now. You have to wait for that one. Ab. <laughs> so purple is like one of my all-time favorite movies. I also like Shawshank Redemption, Usual Suspects. Usual Suspects, I was like, what just happened? What just happened here? Because that movie mm -mm -mm, was 
All right, I think we are done. Ooh, see, I just watched the middle to the end. <laughs> we are friends. <laughs> Paid more attention to that, right? All right, so we're gonna just set this one to the side. That's still tacky. It's still tacky. So we won't be able to complete this. We're gonna call it quits right here. I have to do the rest of the sides once these dry, and I may do an extra coat of paint. Now, in my head, just so y'all know, I was under the impression oh was under the impression that we would have a solid napkin and it would look like a solid napkin but as you can tell that is not what has transpired here these two could probably be related this one is the uh, weirdo cousin <laughs> And I'm okay with that. Hi, Chocolate City Sim. How are you today? Hopefully well. Sent you a message. I haven't got a chance to see if you responded or not. This side is flapping up a little bit. I want to fix that before I take all this stuff away. So this still had a little bit of that uh, glue on it, and it was wet, so I'm just going to apply this brush on it, and then we'll go on to the next thing. So now you can go back and do some touch-ups on your wet areas if you wanted to. I tend to like to let it dry and then mess around with it because, you know, sometimes I'll mess it up worse than how it's looking. But this, I can't even get in camera. I can't even get in frame. Get it together, man. Get it together. Yeah. So this is this and this. So that is our project. We did do both sides. They're drying right now. And now, um, I think we have time for our necklace real quick. I am going to just be AFK away from the keyboard away for a few seconds. I need to run and do something. I'm going to go on mute. But when I come back, thank you so much. I will... Uh, we will start our next project. Okay. I don't have any fade to black or anything like that, so I'll be right back.
All right, so before we get started, I just want to say thank you all for hanging out with me. Really appreciate it. It could be anywhere else, and you're choosing to hang out with me, so I really, really appreciate it. We're going to just smoothies out the way. I'll make some jewelry. Not a bunch, just, just one or two things and go from there. Thank you so much, Heather. I really, really appreciate it. She was nervous. She is, I, I was nervous. I was big time nervous. I'm not sure why I've de decoupaged before, but I haven't decoupaged in a while. And for me, sometimes if I don't do a craft project, I erase it out of my memory until I watch a video again to see how to do it or whatever and then you know I can pick up from where I left off but sometimes that's trouble. All right so we do have a few things I want to discuss. I got this from the Dollar Tree Five store when I saw them for a dollar before they changed the prices. And so I thought this would be really cute to play around with and I like these little uh these little pieces. And so whenever I think about making a chunky charm, I always look at this. So this this is what I saw when I got it. It was like chunky charm material versus uh, real crafty material. But we're going to do some stretching. So we're going to choose to stretch out of there. So I think this is a good deal for a dollar. Is it a good deal for a dollar quarter? Yeah. If you can't get it. Um, if you don't have anything you're just starting out and you want to see how it is, you can definitely try that for a dollar a quarter you can't i mean it's a decent price for that particular thing if that's if that's the kind of thing that you want to try right. i don't know if we're going to use this color because it's actually like stretchy string not hard color so i thought we could pick a color in chat okay I know Samara won't pick a color, so if anyone else has a color that you want to play around with and I actually have it out, we can, we can do that. Yeah, I'm going to finish the boxes up and probably, I won't finish them today because I want them to dry. But I will uh, share with you all when I do finish them up. it i'm gonna make you want i'm gonna make you want to uh crack with it why you know what i should have got that i mean it's a dollar right oh it was a dollar i should say so i'm using this stretchy cord whenever i make my chunky chunk not chunk, just my uh braces i always pull the the, the yarn words do not work today i always pull this right here stretch cord just in case it has set up and the elastic is no longer stretchy. Okay. So we got that. And we're going to <laughs> we'll see that down. We're going to use these beads right here. I did pick these up from uh, Michael's, I believe. They were on clearance for five bucks. And I was like, this is a good deal. I think they were five dollars. I, You know, I like a value pack. So yeah. Um, and these were my colors because, you know, I did a whole mermaid theme with series and I'm not even finished with it. I have like maybe two more projects to do. So, but, you know, I got six. So, yeah, we're going to do this and we are going to just look at what we have. Now, I always think that if you're going to, <laughs> we'll see, man, I always consider if I'm crafting for someone, the person. Uh, in this case, if we're going to be making this for me, I'm going to actually make something for me. And so, because, you know, it has these, like, these blues and this purpley and 
ocean y things. I could make it for us, but I'm gonna make it for myself just to make it a lot less stress stressful. If you decide to cut your own cord, what you should do is use some type of paper clip or a binder clip and hold this or if you have the actual tools that they sell to do that, then you can do you can hold it like that. So what we're gonna be doing is I'm just gonna fit it around my wrist. Just like that. And so this is all we need to really focus on. Okay. And we're going to put uh, this little purple heart. We're going to use this blue one. Let's use this blue heart. And let's go ahead and make it. We're going to make two. We're going to try to make two bracelets. Okay. And so I have no rhyme or reason, no pattern, no anything for what I want to do. So I am going to pull out a, another set of colors really quickly. This is where being organized actually helps. <laughs> you can just open up your containers or whatever you have and pull out something and move on from there. You don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. And so I do, you know, I I always poo-poo on people that are organized in a in a funny way. Cuz I think for crafters, we will over-organize and then we'll be like, I don't want to use my craft supplies. I don't want to craft. I don't want to do this. And I'm like, that's not. Don't get organized then. Let's see if we can use some of this to uh, influence some more. Right now. So we're just going to take these and we're going to do a pattern, a real quick pattern. We're going to go um, we're going to do this Champagne pearly color, and then we're going to do these little pearl and the big one. Now, what I do recommend is you pull out your bead board, but you know, we just transition from painting so we don't have our bead board out. But I do recommend pulling out the bead board if you're going to do this. You can do it however you like, though, you know, if you're a craft. But bead boards are a lot easier. This is a food tray and I like this food tray <laughs> versus the bead board for this instance because I can just see what I want to do. And I use this when I'm making my bangles for the chunky charms. So, you know, we're, we're just doing, we're in finishing up our hangout session for today. Let's see. Or you can pull out your bead rimmer. Bead rimmer. And you see this little hole right there. You can make it work. When you get uh, discount things, now dollar twenty five will get you one. Cause they're not a dollar the most. This, I think, this is fun. I I think for beaters, like if you're a beater, or, you know, I think that we like to see our stuff like out, and we want to play with it and touch it and and have fun with it. So, yeah, I'm not trying to influence you, although that is one of my. <laughs> Uh, crafty goals is to always influence you to do what makes you happy when you're crafting or whatever. So if I actually had had my clip, crimp, I would have put it where we need to end it at. But I think this is um, the spot. And it doesn't matter because we're going to make two. And I like to change a pattern when we're doing two or three or four. But we're going to go with this color. And we're going to throw an oddball blue or something in there at some point. Or maybe this dark. Then we'll do that. We'll do two or three. And then I can make some earrings to go with it off camera and come back and show with you those. But if you buy a value pack of something, I recommend you try to use it faster than not. Because what tends to happen, at least for people that collect craft stuff, we tend to buy more. And then the thing that we bought last week or last month sits and doesn't get used. And then you're cleaning up your craft room. And you're like, oh, I bought that in 2000 And now it's 3000 right? So I do recommend you try to use up your stuff as you buy it. Uh, I have a lot of stamps that I've purchased over the years that I'm like, ooh, we're going to use that and do that. So 
you'll be seeing that. Now that I'm feeling a lot better than I have been this year, I would be sick the whole first part of the year. I don't know. As long as I can recover, that's always the goal. I um, you know, I have I have a lot of ideas and plans for us to hang out and craft together. I'm not sure how you all feel about the meeting. No one responded, so I don't know if you like the meeting or not. We don't have to be, we can definitely make paper projects. If you're, if you're more inclined to see me do that, that's fine too. I won't get offended, but I am going to incorporate more of the things that I like that I have that I don't do. Okay. So you will see a lot more like crochet projects, completed ones when I complete them and, you know, random things, more jewelry projects. I watched uh, Deb yesterday. I'm trying to catch up on the videos. So, you know, this would be my weekend of catching up for January. You know, we're getting ready to go in March. Um, and her earrings were so cute. Like, oh my goodness. I was like, I need to learn how to make those. And I think I will try that. So, you know, we already got our one bracelet. So if you want to make an arm full of bracelets, which people do, I like to see ladies that have, I like to see, I call them eccentric ladies. The ladies that have all that jewelry on, those bracelets, and they all color coordinate, and they just look so good. And she has on some big, floppy, crazy-looking hat and, like, a, a crazy skirt, and she smells really nice. I don't know. Have you ever met one of those ladies? I've met a few of those ladies here. They have all jewelry on their arm. The earrings are, like, wow. And you're like, oh, we could be craft buddies. And then she, she's like, oh, yeah, I got to go, blah, 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 blah. What out of town or whatever. Oh, okay, great. We'll keep it there. Heather has spoken well, and I appreciate that. I will be more next Friday. I don't know if I'll stream because my son doesn't have school. And you want to talk about interruptions, that little boy. Mommy, can I have a snack? No. Mommy, can I have a snack? I just told you no. Mommy, can I have a snack now? No. What about now, mommy? Then I'm like, what do you want for snack cookies? I'm like, no. So then he'll go and look at the refrigerator and be like, well, can I have this? And he'll pull out like the Easter bunny or something. <laughs> All right. So this is our pattern. Um, let's act like we know how to display stuff. All right. So this is our pattern, right? And as you can see, it's a three pattern bead situation. It is light purple, small, big right with the dark purpose and so when we close this the pattern will repeat itself right so we just need to make sure that it fits and we're going to do one more row of that because it's a little bit it's not tight but it's, it pulls it so we want to make sure that it is good to go so we're going to do our whatever color this is the champagne purple pink color the medium purple And the large purple. Personally, for me, if I wear jewelry that's stretchy, I would prefer that it's a little bit loose versus too tight. So here's our pattern once more. And you see, we pulled, we got this pattern together really fast, right? Really, really fast. And this looks, you know, elegant, all right? For a costume party, right? Costume ball. Custom jewelry, fashion jewelry, whatever the name of it is. So I'm going to slide this down because we don't want to waste our stretchy part, even though we have an abundant amount of it. We still want to preserve that. And so now I'm just going to make some knots. Any type of knot you prefer is what works. And I'd like to do this like three times, three or four times, because I just want it to be super secure and not um, <laughs> fall apart. I've had that happen before. That's why I always check my card as well. So now we're going to just snip this. And for extra measure, if you have uh, some glue, you can use your glue. Now you can use your E6000 glue. It stinks really, really bad. You can use a -ling. You can use any type of glue that says that it's going to work on plastic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take where my knots are and I'm going to put this glue right here. 
and since it's my bracelet, I'm not I'm not concerned about it not uh, moving. This big ball not moving. And now I'm just going to slide it down a little bit. You'll never be able to tell where the beginning is and the end is. So that is our first bracelet. I hope that you have enjoyed that quick little thing. We're going to do one more. And so now, if if we're being honest, I don't want to wear one bracelet. I want to wear three bracelets. No, I don't know the name of any of anything unless I have a, a label. Like, I know that these are acrylic plastic beads. And these are glass beads. And this is a crackle bead. But when it comes to like hematite and metal, no. I'm, uh -uh. Because when, when crafting becomes a chore, I don't like it. I hope that makes sense. Like when I'm crafting and it's like, oh, I got to get this done. I, I won't do it because she's a self-saboteur. And she's like, uh-uh. So we're going to try to whip out three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to whip out a, a more purple one. And then I'm going to try to whip out a more this color one. So we can have three. Yeah, I, I just want to craft. I want to have fun. I don't want to be stressed out about anything. And that's why you always hear me say I hate that crafting is so entailed with numbers. Because who wants to do math while you're crafting? Like, that's just... In my opinion, it's like, ugh. All right, so now we're going to do um, this medium one. We're going to do a small one. And remember, when you do get a value pack, the small you'll probably have more smaller beads than large beads because large beads cost more money to produce than a, a small bead, right? They just probably put them on that string, that uh, string, this, the... Uh, when they have the beads, they dip them in the color and then they just slice slice down, right? Or dip them in the slice. I really, really enjoy watching how, you know, things are made. So I've watched a few of how they do like blown glass and I know, I'm like, I'm going to put this in her box. That's why I decided not to go with the blue. Uh -huh. all right, oh man. Yeah, I got to get that box out. I got to get all y'all stuff out of my house. It is starting to drive me bananas. Um, no, we want to do. We want to do two. So let's do two. Let's do big, little. That pretty. This is such a pretty bead. Um, you know what? I I uh, tried to paint some of my beads before, right? And it, it didn't turn out well for me. It was a disaster. Disaster. All right, so it's looking, looking a little bit eyeball-y. Uh, but we're going to get three of these, and then we're going to be done, right? We're going to get three of these, and then be done. Although blue is my favorite, one of my favorite colors. Blue, green, and gray, right? Um, we're doing this for uh, the 79-degree lady in Florida today. <laughs> Yep. Just got to mail this stuff out. All of it. So we have, this is our pattern. If you can see it, it's large, small, different color, small, large. Well, not the largest. So let's say medium, right? In my fingertips. Anyway. So that's the pattern. And this is the pattern that we will repeat. Now, once we get to the end of this pattern, it could be a problem because... It's too purple. So what we'll probably end on is this white or pinky color being the end of the uh, the pattern, right? So we're just going to set that to the side so we can see how it's progressing and how it looks. Or not. <laughs> we got to keep the pattern going. Moving too. Sure. All right, so normally what you would want to do is pull out your colors and not dig through and find the colors as you go. But, you know, we can, I think we can whip up this bracelet in no time. The 
color. It's not like it's a, a vast majority of one particular color. Nobody hating on that 79 degree weather. I'm just saying, goodness, 79. I don't even think Florida, people that live in Florida own a coat. Like, what for? Somebody told me it was cold. And I was like, what's the temperature? It was like, it's 60. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's Florida cold, not normal people cold. So you see how our pattern has changed. And I want to go. So it's big, medium, excuse me, medium, small, different color. Small, medium, different color. All right, that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. How cold is it where you live, Nick? I just want to take a, a check. <laughs> Alaska's forty degrees. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. So y'all have to bust out y'all coats. No, y'all probably still at the beach. <laughs> What a sandwich, y'all. What a nice po' boy. So I think I have messed up the pattern. That's why I keep adjusting and looking right. So let's see. So it's like a five pattern in this. In five. I'm not hating on your weather at all because it's ridiculous. I remember last year, everybody was freezing. Everybody in America was freezing, not Florida. They still show people at the beach. Then they pan back to Texas and it was people lighting bonfires. It was so cold. We had snow on the ground. Not Florida, they had sand. Oh, yes. You know, you don't get an opportunity to wear it. You got to flex when you can flex, right? You're like, let me put this on because I don't know when it's going to be 59 degrees again because, you know, we don't get that kind of weather. I had sent Barry Crafty a, a, a scarf and she was like, it never gets this cold. I was like, it's fashion. You have to sacrifice for fashion. You have to just put it on. And she was like, no, it's hot. Like, and then she said it was cold a couple of times, right? Probably like 50 degrees. I was like, you can wear your scarf now. And she just laughed at me. I was like, so that's a no? <laughs> see, I see how this is going to work out. It's not going to work out for us. All right, so I am not... The same thing for us, like I told my friend who lives in Canada, a, I was like, it's cold here. She's like, cold? She's in a picture of snow on the ground. She's like, it's like negative whatever. I was like, it's Texas cold, okay? Don't do that to me. It's Texas cold. Because all our temperatures are, you know, whatever it is for us. And we may be cold or hot from that. So when you have smaller beads, Heather, especially, it takes a little bit longer to build up the necklace because your beads are smaller, right? Which, you know, makes sense. But in general, that's normally how it would go. Put this 
right in the box. No one's making this for me, but no. It's purple. Can't stand it. Too much purple. And you know what I did not do today? I did not fussy cut. I'm proud of myself. I loved when I lived in Maryland. It was great. When it was snow, it was still okay to like travel. It was nice to go to areas that, you know, like indoor events and things like that. But I was younger and didn't have much sense. <laughs> now I'm like, I might break my hip. I'm not leaving the house. It's cold. <laughs> This cat is a little bit more tricky for me. Now I think uh Yeah. I wonder how that works on your mental health, you know, for six months, right? Or even all that light for six months. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna craft away a lot of uh, blue. I need to get some die cuts cut out. I'm gonna make some flowers. I have another idea bubbling in my head, but I'm not gonna mention it because my body will be like, "Let's get sick." All right, so I think this is good. A little bit more and then we'll be good to go i think at first when i first started like crafting crafting i was like i need to craft every day because it just felt so good to create and make stuff even if it was crap you know when, well not everybody starts off with crap but i did and um then i was like if i don't craft i'm gonna you know cut somebody but now, like, I can go a couple of days without crafting because it's other things that are occupying my time. But I always, in the back of my mind, like I'm telling my, like when I'm playing video games, my friend, I should be crafting. I should be crafting. I want to craft. I want to craft. I want to craft. So there we go. You see our pattern has uh, showed back up. And we're going to slide this down So. Now, you don't have to make stretchy bracelets. You can definitely use your beading wire and put a clasp and all that on it. You know, those types of pieces, these findings and things, I think it classes up certain jewelry. Like, if you watch, if you Google or watch on YouTube some of the people that make jewelry, some of them use, like, inexpensive stuff and it looks a million bucks. And then some people use a million bucks stuff and it looks even more expensive, so... But I just like to dabble in it and not be super stressed out about, it. Um, you know, cutting paper or stringing some things on. I will tell you the one thing that's a, a little bit frustrating is pulling out a lot of craft supplies and not getting a chance to use them all. Um, so that could be one thing that you have to, you know, be very mindful of. I've, I've started trying to just pull out what I need, but then my brain is like, oh, we need this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Like today, I had all of the decoupage stuff together except for the decoupage glue was on the other side of the room. So that is something to keep in mind. So we're going to just do that. It will dry. We have two. I am going to call it here. Um, this is cute. I'm going to have to keep this in mind. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but anyway. This is what we've made today. We've done this and we have some boxes that are still drying. So we will come back and I will see you all next Tuesday live stream unless something happens. I will post in the Facebook group if something does happen where I can't be live. But I want to say thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. It means a lot. I hope that you had fun. You got a chuckle or two or three in. And if not, you learned something. You learned that, you know, 
discount wings are pretty good these to make these pretty bracelets. I want to say thank you for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.